Thank you guys for joining the panel tonight. Uh, let's get right to shoot the breeze topic number one. Then. Shoot the breeze topic number one tonight. Who taught you to hate yourself? A Malcolm X quote. This came with a link, of course. Let me share it with you guys. Here we go. This link takes us to Twitter. Uh, Ron G is replying to a thread here. But this was added. So let's check it out. We'll watch it twice. It's only 45 seconds. And then we'll discuss it. I have no African heritage whatsoever and no African relatives. I am all Cherokee Indian. How come? You probably are too. Well, why do you say that? Because Cherokee. I guess it's a tether internet. What's going on? The Indian is, is black, actually. It's the same people that Columbus met when he got off the boat. We are not African. This is Richmond, Virginia, where the first 20 slaves landed. There's no record of any other slaves landing here. Those 20 Africans that landed here were on a boat that were that was hijacked by Portuguese. The real black slaves here were Portuguese. Most of the slaves in this country were actually white, not black. My people owned slaves. We weren't slave owners. 96% of the southern slaves were owned by the five tribes of the Lakota. I am Cherokee, the largest of the five tribes. I have no African heritage whatsoever. And no oh, it's not my computer. It's the video. No African relatives. I am all Cherokee Indian. How come? You probably are too. Well, why do you say that? Because Cher the, the Indian is, is black, actually. It's the same people that Columbus met when he got off the boat. We are not African. This is Richmond, Virginia, where the first 20 slaves landed. There is no record of any other slaves landing here. Those 20 Africans that landed here were on a boat that were that was hijacked by Portuguese. The real black slaves here were Portuguese. Most of the slaves in this country were actually white, not black. My people owned slaves. We weren't slave owners. 96% of the southern slaves were owned by the five tribes of the Lakota. I am Cherokee, the largest of the five tribes. I have no African heritage whatsoever. All right, I've seen this video making the rounds before. Trigger Happy 262 in the chat says the only possible black population that came to the Americas is around South America. The Lucy skull they found was likely related to Melanesians. Uh, he says Ivan van Sertema only had a working hypothesis. It shouldn't be completely thrown away, but to me it's done more damage than good. Jose is in the chat. He says, Portuguese. I told some of y'all, my Cape Verdean people are cooking them blackheads in the USA. Ha, ha, ha. Real Black Gentleman says 96% uh, sorry, ninety-six were owned by $5 Indians. Gotcha, Chief. Uh, Trigapi says, this is what happens too when black equals African. If that, equation doesn't, if that equation doesn't become an equation, this is what results, right? Uh, with that said, uh, Tanzan, you saw this, you know, what, what seems to be a black man, right, um, saying he and his people are not African, never was. They were Indians. And you see the prompt that reminds us of Malcolm X, quote, who taught you to hate yourself? What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think he learned very well. You know, he, he learned very well. Not only is he denying, um, you know, what he is, but he's proudly calling himself, you know, um, a, a slaveholder. I think he said that at the end. And for me, you know, you can call yourself whatever you want, but for you to now take on, you know, this is like, I don't know, Stockholm Syndrome with a twist. You know, now not only do you love, you know, your masters, you are your, your own master. It's, it's, it's weird to me. Um, if you want to claim something, yeah, you can claim it, but you also have to look at the, the history. And the history was like, was that um, the Indians took um, the, the, the black slaves. They, they took them as slaves. So I don't know what part of that that he doesn't understand. But, you know, I, I think that it's either you, you, you deal with the brutal reality or you find some, 
easy escapism and i think this is you know this is the the latter so i i i'm not you know if for me just like with people's beliefs and so on if it makes him feel good about himself or gives him some sort of esteem i'm not for the ignorance is bliss but sometimes you just let people you know um be happy with with what they they want to believe but i still think that it's a it's a shame uh for him you know he can say that he can you know he has some mixture and there's nothing wrong with that that thing but to just um completely deny it ah <sighs> well you know i i i i think that you know we 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 leave him alone that's the best i can say is that even the people that he claims to have an identity with they they don't they don't accept him either so sometimes you you you're running away from one thing but what you're running to may not really be what you think it is because yeah he can run away or or not run away well he can say that he's not um from from the motherland but the the Cherokee or whoever that he he claims to have such brotherhood with have they given him the same gesture have they also accepted him as brothers you know so yeah that's all i'll say for that but i understand that it's it's not easy especially not knowing where you you are exactly from or not knowing your your proper history or having to go through you know the experience so I understand it. I understand that you know sometimes maybe if people don't have something, they'll they'll grab hold on to anything that um, makes them either feel better or makes some kind of sense to them. So, yeah, that's all. Yeah, that feel good stuff can um, that feel good stuff is, can be very problematic. Uh, you know. Uh, there's a time when you had literally snake oil salesmen walking around, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they'll sell you some medicine that turns out to be bird shit in oil or something like that, right? But because the guy has the ability, and this is what Tariq and them are, Yvette and them are, they make you feel good to be this American and to to claim to be, you know, to claim this this idea of American exceptionalism. And that's really what's going on. We have encountered that sufficiently, I guess, with African exceptionalism. Uh, I think it was Trigger Happy who said it before. Like, you know, we make Africa strong. People will be clamoring. It's either him or Great House. People will be clamoring to, to want to be African, which is real funny, real, real funny how... Allegiances don't really matter. It's just about what it's just about what looks good, what feels good. That's kind of crazy to me, you know. Um, with that said, let's go to let's go to Buana. Buana, what's your well, Coco? You know, you, I think that all of us know who um, who taught us the initials in ourselves. It came from the colonizers, so we've known this. The thing about that is we as the colonized or formerly colonized, we we repeat the lie perpetually, you know, generationally. We we repeat the the perpetual lie that when they found us in Africa, they found us with a bone in our nose, you know, and we were savages. We had nothing to contribute to civilization. So obviously, you know, young black in these kinds of things, we want to get away from that experience because we in self, we ourselves internally, we don't feel like you know we have, we have, we don't have anything to contribute. So this is the this is the reason why we we turn to escapism, escape that past and, and that heritage. If we are part of the true history of of our sisters, and a lot of these people are devoid of that history, you know they they don't they don't self study. They don't really look at other kinds of alternative information. They just, they live in, in, a, in a certain westernized system and they imbibe the things that the westernized system would perpetuate. And really what it is, is the Negro has nothing to contribute to the civilization. These are the lies that they continue. And now they, we off on, the, on the, the reservations, you know, with this escapism nonsense. 
and and with this guy, I'm sure uh, Dane Calloway had something to do with teaching him. But I found, you know, and listening to these conversations is when you listen to them, they, they, they refer to that. My grandmother said, or my auntie said so. So the elders was perpetuating a lie as well, you know, and and now we live in a time of, of mass information. We live in a time of science where we could really track from through bloodlines, you know, where, uh, where our family's histories would have come from. But these guys, they are anti-scientific, they are anti-intellectual, they are anti-book uh, knowledge and learning. It, it's interesting. When you refer to scientific knowledge, they, they say, we don't want, we don't want to have, have anything to do with that. We be dealing with genealogy, genealogy. But genealogy is made up of the same liars who create, who, who they say create the scientific information. <laughs> they become walking contradictions of themselves. And this is unfortunate. But um, I understand that in any team or a team event, everyone likes the winner. You know, in the Bahamas, you know, we was hard and fast uh, Laker fans. Laker fans, because, a, you know, a, a Bahamian athlete would have went to the Lakers. So it made many Bahamians Laker fans. But also because Lakers was winning, you know, so we latch on to what was winning. So these guys, they say, okay, you know, some of these guys say, since we can't latch on to white America, because they'll never accept us. Some, some people who are delusional, they say, we'll they latch on to the Indians since they have, uh, the data, the Native Americans, we're going to latch on to them because we perceive them as winning, winning as well, even though they ain't winning. So decisions are heavy, very heavy. But in we'll work with the underdog, until the underdog becomes the winner, you know, until they become the franchise team. Because the franchise before, I feel like we could be the franchise team again. And we just need to put in place the, the, the same things that the winners have done. You know, to become uh, the franchise players and the winning team. I think that we don't want to do the work and we don't want to do the effort. We want to just accept the praise. We want to accept the. We just want to accept the 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 end uh, of the situation when everyone looks at us, looks at us in a, in a very glamorous way. But we don't want to go through the process. And I think through the process, you'll learn how to become a winning team. And I think that that's the reason why people ain't on team block as yet. But we're going to do the work, man. We're going to do the work until we become something that, that's going to be the envy of the world again. And I believe that that'll happen. I, be, I really believe that. But I'll stop there. I appreciate that, Buana. Yeah, I grew up a Lakers fan. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had some family who were Celtics fans in the 80s, and I was looking at them crazy like, what? Like, what do you like about Bird and Mikhail and them? But anyway, uh, in the chat, KW Don Seven says, "I check out whenever somebody starts talking Aboriginal flat Earth nonsense." Real black gentleman is out there. Shout out to him and Joe Say. Uh, he says, "I never see these guys pull out family trees, but that's what Bono was getting. It's always your grandma and them was talking some shit." Uh, he says, "Not a shred of scientific analysis." KW Don Seven says, "If he is Cherokee, let him try to get a piece of the casino action." F O H. Yeah, get. Get out of here with that bullshit. Uh, KW Don Seven says he will deny DNA testing via African ancestry. RBG, Blue Black German says 32 great, great, great grandparents, all of them are Indian, bro. I mean, these are good, these are very good questions. KW Don Seven says when the bell tolls for him, I will not feel sympathy for him. Trigger IP262 says the more and more I study history, the more I see the revision of history as deep propaganda, deeper than the revision of imagery, right? Uh, Zulism is in the chat. He says, we American. Okay. Uh, Trigger Happy says, Dan Calloway should be seen as a CIA agent. Oni, what say you to all of this? Well, first I want to know, did anybody see my question? Because I'm not no getting one answers. Responded, right? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe they didn't get it, but um, yeah, like you know what? Oh, I'm actually, ask the question again now. Ask it now. Oh, okay. So let me see if I can <laughs> pull it up. Uh, so here's here's what happened. Here's the predicament. Oh, I didn't see it in the chat. Um, here's the predicament, though. I uh, met this pretty 
Ghanaian woman, right? Uh, we were chatting. I asked her where I could get some Amiapano music, you know, some South African tunes. And she said, you should check out Clubber Zuli. You know what I mean? So I was just wondering if anybody thinks I should block her. You know what I mean? Um, because I think she might be state property. Like, what, what do y'all think? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, on the topic. Uh, so I, inter- interestingly, Dr. Clark was saying that um, somebody asked Dr. Clark, they said, Dr. Clark, what do you do with, about black people who do not, like who want to get in the way of black liberation? And Dr. Clark said, you know, um, I think he said like, just like stay, stay, stay as far away from them as you can. You know what I mean? And like, I think like we, like I, I would hate, I would hate to that. You know, this guy comes in and says, you know, all this kind of, like, like, I feel like, I can say it this way, right? I had an elder, African-American elder. I thought she was a brilliant lady. You know, she is actually part of the ANPM for a minute, you know? Because I would tell her about Carlos Cooks and she, no, she would tell me about the Black, 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 Black movement. She'd tell me about the, uh, you know, the like like the stuff that Carlos Cooks would do. And, because she used to organize with him, whatever, right? Uh, allegedly, or the organization. I don't know if he was around by the time she was, right? But uh, she would sometimes invite me to the powwow. You know, I didn't go, but she was like, yeah, come to the powwow. You know, I got some Native American, uh, you know, ancestry. Like, sometimes I would see her wearing a feather in her head, you know? <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I, I'm from Tether, she's from Feathers, you know? Um, it was, uh, like, it's, a th- it's been a thing. It's not new. I, I mean, I think all of us heard it you know, like 20, 30 years ago, where some black person would say, I got Indian here. You know, like 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 they kind of thought that's what mixed hair looked like. You know, nowadays we call it, you know, like mulatto, like mixed people. But back in the day, people thought it was Indian here, you know, that kind of stuff. Um I'm saying all that to say, uh, you know, I probably I, I mean I did like the sister, right? But a lot of the backwardness that I might have had, um like, I actually didn't blame her. But my thing is that, yeah, like, you, you know, when it comes to people, in fact, that's what Carlos Cook said, too. It's like, you just take them, you weigh them, they're good against their bad, you know? You weigh their knowledge against their ignorance, all right? And then you move from there. The dude lets you know he was incredibly ignorant. You say, okay, well, sorry, I'm, I'm only trying to engage black people. You know what I mean? And then keep it moving. You know, and then when this white boy you know, has him, uh, or anybody has him, you know, uh, you know, against the wall, you say, well, look, I'm only looking up for my own people, man. I ain't Indian. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, ask, ask, you know, you know, Blackfoot, you know, to, to help you out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's pretty much it. Like, like, why does he feel this way? I mean, I, I got to say that it's kind of on us a little bit in the sense that we need to be educating our own people. Right, and if you're not educating your own people, the reality is somebody will. Right, if you're not if you're not teaching your own people, somebody will be teaching your people. So somebody taught this dude, you know, and my, not just but but like it goes back, you know, it goes back. So you know, it is what it is. Like like I say, you know, if he wants to think something like that, good for him, you know. Um, Kudos, he like it's best when they let you know that they ain't with you. You know? What happened to Fred Hampton was he didn't know the dude wasn't with him. Right? If the dude came out and said, Hey, you know, I'm actually working for the FBI, CIA, Fred Hampton would be appreciative and probably still be alive. You know what I mean? But people, you know, my Angelo said, when people let you know who they are, when people tell you who they are, believe them the first time. This dude told you, hey, look, I'm not about you guys, right? Believe him. Well said. Well said. Uh, shout out to Brother Bakari who says, Peace on Black Power, KWAZ Radio, KWAZ Radio Family. Uh, KW Don 7 said, Dane Calloway should be charged with high treason and dealt with accordingly. Uh, Real Black Gentleman said to KW Don 7, Todd and Feather. Um, I don't... Go ahead. No, I, I want to uh, piggyback off of something um, when he just said, because 
this whole idea of educating your people and and this whole idea of liberation of education and things these these kinds of things are extremely dangerous extremely dangerous you go ahead and try to explain to this black man who's probably more than 50 years old that he's not indian and then go about the business of showing them things like that he'll probably shoot your head off you know what i mean these there are some of us and even back in the day you know with the whole harry tugman now now trying to liberate you know the rest of the people on a plantation you know that was a very dangerous game because there were slaves who uh who, they was like you know we ain't going nowhere you know this is our home and we ain't trying to go home in fact we going to tell my son you right now you know these are very dangerous games so like the brother said um initially he said that when if a guy says convincingly that he is indian or he's hebrew <laughs> all the all these other uh aspects fantasies these brothers have in their head you got to keep in some instances not all but in some instances you got to keep it moving keep it moving so i agree with that to some degree i really do yeah my concern with the keep it moving thing i i agree with everything that you and oni and tan had to say my only one concern is when you let these guys go unchecked who are they teaching right who is this guy going to be teaching and is it going to be a time where there's, there's just this groundswell of our people who have been just completely miseducated where we could never you know do anything uh you know where where where, where numbers or might you know is, is called for that's the that's the one that's the only one hitch i i do agree so many people gotta leave them like this man here I, I, and this guy on the screen right now. This was a tweet I saw a black man put up earlier this week. Like you gotta, you you do have to leave these people alone for the most part. But my problem is, who are they indoctrinating? Because everyone is a everyone is a potential teacher. Who are these guys going to indoctrinate? Look at Azuli. He's indoctrinated, right? So that that's my. And who is Azuli going to be teaching that this this stuff to? You know. That's my one issue. Uh, is there any last words on this prompt? Well, yeah, I would just say that's the that's the issue with regards to our lack of institution building. You know, that's why I said it's partially on us because, you know, the thing is that, like, like nobody could teach. Like, it would be very hard to convince a lot of people in America that they weren't in America. You know what I mean? Or that um, Joe Biden wasn't the president. You know, or 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 just things that America tells you and reminds you and makes sure to teach you and has those institutions to teach you. Uh, we don't have those. You know what I mean? So a lot of us, you know, if I say, oh, say, can you, you know, like we guys know what I'm talking about. Right. Um, or if I even do the, you know, happy birthday song, you know what I'm talking about. We are uh, particularly if we're talking about people in America. We are a cultured and indoctrinated by this American uh, tradition where the American um, knowledge base is very proliferated here. But what isn't proliferated here is that Pan-African knowledge. So a lot of what we know about ourselves as African people is coming from this public fool system, you know? And, and a lot of it is coming to us to propagate this dysfunction, this social dysfunction that we are not countering because unfortunately we are just sending our children to this place where these social dysfunctions come about, you know? Because even, even the word slave, right? That means something to people who go to um, public school system. It means nothing to people who don't or even a lot of people in Africa, right? Uh like, like the reason why it doesn't mean anything to them is because they're not exposed to the same educational system, right? We are. And so if you listen to this guy, he's he, he has this sort of internal conflict with slavery, right? And he has this sort of, um, you know, this sort of knowledge about the Indian tribes in America, right? And he, maybe his family member was saying, hey, you know, we we just you know we we have this cognitive disassociation with our so on and so forth kind of like what Malcolm X was saying like who taught you to hate yourself right 
uh, that's fine, right? The issue is that, like, that's going to be on repeat. The the people who are making these fools are is like I said, the public fool system. And if you're not if you're not building institutions against it, you know, the reality is that you you can't counter it, you know, because tomorrow. Uh, I mean, I mean, actually, I'll say this. I just saw this, you know, right before. I couldn't listen to it because I'm because we're here now. Uh, but Monique just came out as a homosexual or some shit like that, you know. Uh, Monique, who uh, there's a video of her from like 20 years ago saying, "If there's any motherfucking faggots here, you know, something like that, right?" Like she's just like the most virulent homophobe. She's all of a sudden uh, a homosexual, right? That's the propaganda of the state. And I was thinking about this too because I was like, let me get my son. Some some more books that are more 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 his age, right? And I'm thinking to myself, a lot of these books that I might order or that I, you know, if I don't read through it, right, it might have some gay shit in it. Just yeah. like if I'm yeah. turning on Netflix, it might have some gay shit in it, right? Uh, and and that's where things are headed. It's like, how do you fight? You know, somebody comes out queer, somebody else comes out queer, and if you fight in the queers, you know, the reality is that the queer maker, you know, like the Frankenstein. Is not being fought. So it's like, yeah, you, you're going to get this fool. And it's like, like that's why I say I would go into retreat mode. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll go into retreat mode. But if you want to stay, you're going to have to stay with a, around a bunch of people who believe they're Indians, believe they're Hebrews, believe they uh, believe they uh, Israelites. Yeah, queers, right? But they don't believe they're Yorubas. They don't believe they Chui, they're Khan. They don't believe they Zulu. They, they, they only believe in you know the Middle East or some shit, you know, but that's what it is. Thank you for that, Oni. Let's welcome in uh this FBA uh lover, uh Azulism. How are you this week? Yo, <laughs> yo, you're gonna you're gonna have to stop that. <laughs> yo, I'm I'm coming on right now because you attacked me. First of all, I never said that we were not African. I'm just simply saying that we were here first. So if if that's not saying that we are not from the continent, I'm saying that we were here first. And and the whole can we stop saying the whole theory out of Africa was given to you by the same people that you're fighting right now, supposedly. So stop that shit. Stop it. We don't know the y'all don't know the whole facts. All of, all y'all y'all talking about it was told to you. By the same people that 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 that, that brought us, that brought you here supposedly to slavery, so do not say that. Oh oh oh, that I'm saying that we're not from Africa. I never said that. I just said that. Uh, we were here first. So this brother in here, maybe he don't know the, he doesn't know how to express himself, and he's just trying to. I'm not saying he's right. He might not know certain um. He he might be taking listening to the uh Ados or the FBA or whatever, but I'm not. So all of a sudden we acting like we know this and that. All this oh, just like there's the, the, there's a book, there's people that have a theory that we came here first. And what is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? That we were here first and we were we were established here first. I don't understand what why you're fighting this, acting like if somebody says this. Oh, it's it's self hate. I don't get this. Maybe this brother, this older, this older person, maybe he don't know any better, or maybe he's trying to find the truth. Or also, the theory out of Africa that uh, everybody left Africa and travel and then came came to America to this uh, whatever the Barring Strait, whatever that is. That's all a theory. What is so difficult for people to be like, okay? There could be another theory that Africans travel through here first. To me, it's worse that you guys can't fathom that the people who built the pyramid could have came here first. Yeah, it's 40, worse. No, it's, it's possible, but, but 40 million people didn't come here. 40 million people didn't get here. What do, how, how, long do you, how long do you think people reproduce when they come here? You know, what I'm saying is, right, we have the more recent evidence, documents to show that we were transported out here largely during the Ma'afra. My question to you two is, are Cherokees 
uh, African, uh, uh, these different Indian tribes, African, because again, how do you become Cherokee, right? Because as far as I know, Cherokee is this uh, Amerindian group, right? How do you become Amerindian? That, that's really my question. If you, did you come to America before the Amerindian got here? Well, then how'd you lose America to that Amerindian? Um, that you yeah, that's what that's that's what I'm saying, and I think that's what a lot of some people are, are maybe trying to say is that we came here before the Amerindian, and maybe we got taken over. Maybe there was another, there was a previous Maafa that happened on this land that we don't know about. Because I don't understand how everybody with everybody who are light skinned, straight hair, and stuff like that. I always come from the cold weather. How all of a sudden, these these, these new uh, um, merry Indian you want to say have straight hair, white pale skin, are in the hot weather? I don't understand this. So just like we're going to say a thousand years from now that the 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 the, the, the German that settled in South Africa are the original Africans. Like I don't understand how he, he, people can't fathom that something is is not right by by the pattern that they told us people came here. But Azuli, I, I mean, can, yeah, can I? I'm can, not gonna I? belabor the point. Uh, but I'll say this: How is it? Uh, I, like like Oni would say, ABA, right? How is it we're always anything but African? How is it with Cherokee? But it, but allegedly. Africans came here and mixed in with those groups or became those groups, whatever it is you're trying to say, right? But how is it we never go back to say, yo, we just came from Africa? First of all, I'm not I'm not saying what does that what that man is saying. Me and him are saying totally different things, totally different things, but similar and 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 a little bit. What I'm trying to say, like I said before, Cherokee, maybe this brother right here, because the degradation, the pejorative propaganda that has been l launched against Africa keeps people from wanting to tie themselves to Africa. Maybe that's what he's feeling, but that's not what I'm feeling. All so, right. can, can I can I can I respectfully suggest something though? Um, if you all don't mind, let me just respectfully suggest something. Okay, so if we was the first original inhabitants in this side of the world, right? One thing I know about people, when they journey from one place to the next, they, they don't only take their person with them. They take their culture, they take their language, they take their gods, they take many different things, right? Food. They take their foods, etc., etc. So if, if, let's just see, let's just see, if African from the continent came from the continent to this side of the world, right? And let's just say that the Amerindians or the, the other population, let, we would say that they had a Maafa and they replaced them, kill all them off and replace them. They would still have re, uh, remnants of them being there. Like, e even if it's two little small languages that you could compare from the continent, continent, uh, continent of Africa, in the Americas, you would see a little vestiges of that. You would see vestiges of the foods. You would see vestiges of their culture. So I'm asking, what did they leave so I could find that? I could say, well, these I, people here because this and the food, their language. Look at what they do here. There's some. There have to be some vestiges that they would have left behind to show. That hey, we have we say that they are here because of these things. And and I don't really see a lot of that. So if you could point me in the direction of that, I would be able to be on board with that argument. But because I don't have sufficient evidence, that's why I say that that they, that may not be a possibility. It could be, but we have not found the evidence as yet. So since we didn't find the evidence of yet, I can't I can't uh, go to speculation. You know what I mean? I, I can't go that far to speculation. It's possible because anything is possible on this planet. But until I have better evidence or sufficient evidence, I can't just rely on speculation. That's one. The other thing I wanted to say 
in terms of this out of Africa theory, right? Yes, the, the, the Europeans proffer this argument that Africans originally came on Africa and things like that. And how did they do that? They use their scientists, they use their anthropologists, they use their uh, ethnographical, these other kinds of things. But they still have to contend with the, the scientific community around the rest of the world. So the, 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 the Chinese uh, scientists and ethnographers and, and geologists have to confirm what the Europeans saying. So did the Indian community, so does the African community, because yes, they have African scientists as well. So they can check and see if your evidence or what you offer is correct or incorrect, or it's most plausible or it's implausible. They come, they get into the forums, scientific forums to argue whether these theories are more probable than not. And it seemed to me that the, the, a, lot of, a lot of the scientific community, not just Western science, but a lot of the scientific community universally has accepted that theory. And it's, it is a theory, but a theory based on probable evidence, not just, just based on mystery and myth. But I, 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 would, I would just stop there and, and let the brothers them speak. Does anyone else want to add any uh, last thoughts here? Well, I'll say this. So I think, uh, I don't know what is really talking about. Um, I don't know. That's why, like I said, I'm going to block that lady. Um, but the thing about, one thing is this, that the Native Americans, I'm sorry, about the Africa, out of Africa theory, um, it comes from the, the evidence, which is that the oldest bones are found in certain places in Africa. Hold on. They are found in certain places in Africa. Um, as well, uh, as some people say Botswana, but some people say Kenya, that kind of thing, right? Um, that on top of that, like that's where a huge collection of the bones are, um, a huge collection of the prehistoric um, uh, humanity is. And then you could kind of follow the trail of archaeological evidence, i.e., bones and remains and so on and so forth um, throughout the world. Now, obviously, everybody, I think that people understand that. Um, it's likely that there were some Africans who made it to America. It's not a question of whether some Africans made it to Africa to America. It's a question of whether those people who made it to America um, centuries before the Maafa, whether they are related to the people and um, to who are now in America, the quote unquote African Americans, and to what extent, to what degree, right? Um, it would be minimal, if anything, right? Uh, mostly because the uh, people who might have made it to America um, before um, don't really, there's no real evidence that they uh, didn't do anything but get assimilated, if they got assimilated. Um, there's, there's, there's very little evidence. Now, there is some um, cultural fragments in some parts of 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 the uh, Western Hemisphere, uh, but what this man is claiming about being Cherokee, that is completely ridiculous. In the sense that the Cherokee, their bloodline is recorded, right? So the people of the Native American storylines, they do have like 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 real family trees, you know. So there was this one. Native American who called out, you know, one of these speakers saying, like, like that's his that's his great grandfather or something. You know what I mean? Um, because it was a man from the 1920s or some shit, you know what I mean? Uh, or the man from like 1840s. Like And you is, believe him? And you believe him? What evidence is this? Just because he said that's his father? Well, again, um you you, you people are going by the same people that you claim oppressed to you. All the shit you're regurgitating right now is by all these scientists are following the the the, the people who oppressed you. But you you it's hard for, hard pressed to believe Africans, the niggas that 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 built the pyramids that you claim that you claim are the creator of civilization couldn't come to to to, to America before everybody. Yo, Yo I'm, I'm gonna I, be on the chat. No, I didn't say that it is. All right, go to the chat. All right, but anyway, um, I didn't say that they didn't come. I said, I said that the relationship between 
the people of today and the people of of that time period is not is not you know it's not it's not real in the sense of like you were saying about the genetic test right um i could take a genetic test and show uh relation um show show some sort of biological um tie-in with koku right or with um uh Buana or with Erzuli and with Tanzan in a sense, right? As to say that you can you can you you can compare our genetic makeup to find how distant in our past that um breaking point is, right? Um and then you could do the same with the quote unquote Native American, and you can do the same with the European, and you can do the same with so on and so forth. And you will have these genetic markers along your um, your, your your DNA, you know, substrate, if you will, right? And you can find where these 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 related human groups have diverged from each other, right? Um, and you'll see that with regard to, like, say, me and Koku, it would be more recent um, than with regard to me and the Indian guy and and me and the European, right? Um, and that said, the African American who would be from the same sort of gene pool uh, would be very closely related to somebody like me, and more closely related to somebody like me than to uh, the other people who are called the Cherokee. And so, what 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 I say? Why I say that is to say that if there were uh, uh, earlier Native American population or Native African population, or whatever you would call it, I don't know. Right, but if there were an earlier population, you would you would be able to uh, pinpoint that on a genetic, uh, on a genetic, uh, like profile. But you don't. What you find from genetic profiles is um, African people of the diaspora being close, like having the closest relatives in uh, sometimes Western or Central Africa. Right, um, like that's what you would find. You don't find that close rel- relatives among. Um, let's say like you would say an ancient Egyptian group, or you don't find it again among like, let's say an early, an early passage from ancient Mali, right? Now that's not to say that ancient Mali didn't travel. It's not to say ancient Egypt didn't travel. It's just to say that the people group of today is very likely not um, directly, like not direct descendants of the people who made the trek earlier. I, I, I would, I would like to, I would like to, to dispel a myth that is that is being proffered, and that's that, and I hear and keep on coming up because when people talk about Western science, people automatically go directly to to white men, right? Let me first say that ask yourself, well, where did they get their science from? Where did they get their science from? Much of Western or Western medicine or Western scientific or scientific theory find out where the origins of the or Western, so-called Western science has come from. Since, since people think that we just copying and regurgitating the, 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 the ideas of white men, when in fact, they, they, all they all they doing is copying and regurgitating scientific technique that's been on this planet long before you ever see, uh, what's, what's these, these, these high-minded scientists' names are? You know what I mean? These, the world is an old world, brother. And, and sometimes things what's been happening a long time in the world has been repackaged and reformatted and they put a Western name to it and say, this person is the father of science. When in fact, the scientific technique that he's performing has been done for centuries long before we ever, ever reached the Western world. It's just that these people have the ideas of patent and putting their names on things, name and claim to fame. It's not just Western science. A lot of these people are around the world and, and watch and observe so-called scientific and they put it in the European name and make you think that they're great because they create create and implement these kinds of things when in fact some of these things was going on long before it reached the West. So I I wanna I wanna dispel this myth, this idea that the, the white man has a monopoly on science and has a, a monopoly on uh, intellectual thinking and format because that is that is a myth and they have stolen a whole lot of things that they don't tell you about. So when I when I talk about scientists, science and scientific theory, I'm regurgitating my father notes. 
cleft clef notes, my former father's cleft notes, would, would probably get stolen away from them. Because I know these white boys do not have a monopoly on science. They do not have a monopoly on science. That's a myth. Yeah, so I also want to add to that in the sense of, um, you know, it's realistically, like this is one of the things we have to start to learn to value, and that's observation, you know? Um, if a house is on fire, right, and a white man says, hey, that house, you know, don't go, you know, don't go that way. The house is on fire, right? And obviously you see the smoke or whatever, right? You know, it's not like, oh my gosh, you're a fucking cracker. I'm pretty sure the, that thing is not on fire, right? It it could just be the place is on fire, you know? And why I'm saying that is to say that observations in and of themselves have value. And so when we talk about DNA, we're talking about an observation you can make, anybody can make under an, under a microscope, Right. And under this microscope, there's going to be a sequence of genomes, right? And those sequence of genomes are unique for each individual, right? But they're but but they're similar um, to cl related groups and less similar to less related groups. But they're similar across the span of humanity, in a sense, right? Um, that said, you know, if 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 we're if the assumption is that white people are lying about the genetic structure by um, pro by by writing, like purposely, uh, collectively writing down what they're recording incorrectly just to deceive black people. Um, it's just, it's just kind of conspiratorial, you know, a conspiracy, conspiracy theory um, in the sense that, you know, I, I can't remember the letters, but it's like A-T-R-G maybe or something like that. Like that's the entirety of the sequence. There's four different letters in, in a ATCG. A T C G. Yeah, it, it's four different letters in, in a sequence uh, that like in a, a really long sequence. And and there's a particular sequence you would look at, and you can find the genetic relations between people groups. And and the reality is that uh, overall, the African American, as far as um, the African component is concerned. Right, uh, 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 as well as the Jamaican, you know, the Jamaican and the Trinidadian and the and the Bahamian and the so on and so forth. You find that these are closely related groups, and you find that these are populations that came um, that that came to the Americas around the same time, and and that the African American wasn't in America before, um, uh, like let's say the the, you know, the quote unquote Jamaican was in Jamaica. Um, and and but you also know that the Jamaicans and the Trinidadians and so forth are definitely not indigenous. And, and so it's just if you know who is indigenous versus who isn't, um, like it's it's just it's just very, very clear that African Americans are descended from the recent Africans of the diaspora. Sorry, of the of the Mafa. Yes, sir. That's an absolute fact. Uh, Bakari was here, but yet he to step away. I guess he'll be back. I was cu I was curious to hear what the brother who descended from from feathers had to say. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, there's no last thoughts on that. Let's go to shoot topic number two. That was a good discussion too, by the way.